Yeah. We put 10 big chum salmon in there this morning. Wow. Those are the only two she hasn't killed. Oh my goodness. Here, they they right find them. Here, find, find some room up here. They are incredible to watch. Don't go away. Don't go away. She'll be there. I guess it was. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Fortress of the Bear. My name is Cody and I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about our facility today. So Fortress of the Bear is a non-profit organization, meaning we do not receive any funding from the government, the city, or the state. We are funded solely by admissions, gift shop sales, and donations. So thank you so much for visiting us today. Now what we do here at Fortress of the Bear is we take in orphaned bear cubs and we give them a second chance at life here in captivity. Generally what happens in Alaska when a bear cub is orphaned is someone is actually sent out to shoot and kill that cub. It is seen as the most humane, cost-effective way to hear about the adult brown bears that we have here. So all of our adult brown bears are over on my left-hand side. And the first two residents that we got in were shy food, went to help herself, and lost her life because of it. Luckily for her cubs, though, we had actually just received our permitting eight days prior. So we were able to get these boys brought in here. They were about six months old when we got them in, and not in the best of shape. They were underweight, they had broken teeth, glass embedded in their gums, and even patches of fur on top from flaming garbage on the landfill. At 11 years old, though, they're doing much better for themselves. Kilt is about 850 pounds, and his brother Shaik is actually our largest individual at 1,100 pounds. And when Shaik stands up on his hind legs, he is over eight and a half feet tall. And we only expect him to get bigger, as now brown bears have what is called indeterminate growth, which means they continue to grow throughout their entire lifetime. So since bears in captivity can live 35 to 45 years, we definitely expect him to reach that 1,500 pound mark, if not exceed it within his lifetime. Now the other two adult brown bears that we have over here with Shaiq and Kilsu are Lucky and Toby. And so Toby's the one who's right in front of the den entrance there, walking to the right on the far side of the wall. And Lucky's the one who's on the far side of the pool, kind of walking out of it at the moment. Now these two actually live right here on Baranoff Island, where their mom was raising them in the woods nearby. She was enticed closer to town by the smell of meat and fish scraps and people's trash that they were then leaving out overnight irresponsibly. So she came down looking for an easy meal and wound up consuming so much plastic and foil that she became impacted and died, which is a very slow and horrible way to go. Now luckily for her cubs, locals did notice them wandering around without their mother, so we were able to get them brought in here. They were about 18 months old when they came in, and Lucky had actually even been shot twice in the back leg by locals before they got to us. At nine years old, they're doing quite well for themselves now. Lucky is actually our second largest individual at about a thousand pounds, and his sister Toby is our smallest adult brown bear at 650 pounds. Now our two youngest and newest residents are over here on my right hand side. Now these two little girls are Nuka and Nikiski. So Nuka is going to be the darker colored one with the light collar around her neck there, and then her sister Nikiski is the lighter colored one playing in the street. Now these two girls, like I said, just came to us two weeks ago. They were orphaned when their mom was trying to get into someone's chicken coop. So in defense of their chickens, they wound up shooting and killing them. Now these two little girls were on their own for about three weeks trying to survive before they were finally able to catch them and bring them into us. Nikiski did have a little bit of a limp on one of her feet, but as you can see, she's getting, well, getting around quite well now. And if when you guys leave you want to keep up with their adorable little shenanigans, you can definitely follow us on social media where we do try and post daily photos and videos of these sweet little girls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you might be wondering what our circular habitats were before we turned them into bear enclosures. So these were initially the water clarification tanks for a pulp mill, which shut down in the early 90s. They're absolutely perfect for our bears as they have solid concrete walls and a solid concrete base, which keeps our bears safe inside and wild bears safe outside. They also have built-in drainage at the center, which has allowed us to divert water from a nearby mountain stream to flow in and out of their habitats. So they get fresh water flowing through there on a daily basis, which as you can see by 
by the boys in the pool. They really do enjoy that feature. Each of these circular habitats is about three-fourths of an acre in size, which is about nine times the size of your typical urban zoo bear habitat. And we can actually double that space for them, utilizing our breezeway, which is this big metal structure on the ground level in front of you here. So of course, once our little girls are safely locked down in their den, we can open up that breezeway, and it allows our adults brown bears to go back and forth between these two circular habitats. Okay. Not only doubling the amount of space they have, but also the amount of playmates. Now the third enclosure that we have here at Fortress is on this hillside in front of me here. So everything from that sheet metal fencing down is our black bear habitat, which we just finished expanding about three months ago now. So it gave our black bears access to a little over an acre in space back there. All those trees, berry bushes, and even a stream that flows back in there. Now black bears are a slightly smaller species than brown bears. They usually only get up to about 600 pounds or so, and we have three of these individuals back there. And they're actually the only three black bears that you will see here on Baranoff Island, as we don't natively have them in the woods around here. So these guys came from other parts of Alaska. We have two females back there and one male. Our two females are Smokey and Tulian, also known as Tuli for short, and they came to us from Seward, Alaska.